As some of you may know, I am a pianist who was classically trained prior to enrolling to jazz school. So improv to me was one of those things that was far-fetched. I knew I was going to spend many years trying to reach, you know, that place that I wanted to reach. And at jazz school, improv was one of those things where all of us, you know, we wanted to get right because if you could improvise then it meant you were good or whatever. It's my experience when I was at jazz school, the way in which improv tends to be taught is the focus on licks. If you don't know what a lick is, a lick is pretty much like a jazz phrase or a transcribed jazz, short jazz phrase, like a Charlie Parker lick, right? That like a two bar thing that's been transcribed and then reapplied in here and now. And it's good to learn licks because that's how you keep the tradition going. That's how you sound like jazz. That's how you play bebop. But there are some few things that I want to share today that really helped me with playing through the changes rather than isolating a chord as it shows up. So for example, when you play on top of the changes is when you say, okay, I've got an E minor. Now, what can I play over E minor? Then A7 comes and you're like, what can I play over F? A7 and then D major 7 comes and you're like okay what can I play over D major 7 but when you play through the changes you're able to connect everything smoothly and this is how you create a well-rounded solo that has beautiful melodies. There are specific things that you should actually focus on that might do you more good than just focusing on licks. If you can implement these as well, I think it'll really help you understand the concept of improvisation better. First of all, are you able to play many phrases over one chord? And I think this is something that is not focused on, particularly when I was studying jazz. This is definitely something that was not focused on, but I have found that it has been the most helpful thing of which I learned through transcribing other artists. I noticed that they can say a lot of things over one chord and I'm going to show you why that actually helps with connecting chords. Because if you have, let's say, a D major seven chord, and by the way, I'm playing a, a Miles Davis tune called Tune Up. It's in the key of D major. And uh, it sort of moves uh, through two fives. first concept that helped me play through the changes. Are you able to play many phrases over one chord? I could do This is all language that is built off of the major chord one. Being able to do that, especially over the major chord one or minor chord one in the case of a minor song, this works well because even in the case of a 2-5 as we see in tune up, E minor 7 to A7 to D flat major, whatever language you have over D major 7 the chord will work over a 2-5 because E minor 7 and A7 are both chords that belong to D major 7. And so whatever language you have over chord 1 will be applicable to play throughout that whole 2-5-1. One thing I also learned at jazz school is that you need to focus on the overarching key center, which in the case of a 2-5-1 in D major is D major. And so if you're able to play various bebop lines uh, within D major, then you will be able to move through the 2-5 much more swiftly rather than thinking about licks that you can build over E minor and then thinking about licks that you can build over A7 and then D major 7, having language that focuses on chord one helps you to create more melodic phrasing. Here are some of the phrases that I can share with you today that are common uh, phrases that you find over chord one. For example, that's a really common uh, bebop line. If you think of the bridge of voyage, for example. It has
has these and I've heard a few other artists also use this so this is a bebop line Another popular one is that's also a popular bebop line. Another one is if you want to make it bluesy, you could use a, a blues Oscar Peterson phrase. Over a D major 7 can also work if you want to change it to dominant, you know. So you want to put these all together. So I could do something like. I'm using these major licks to help me move through the chord changes. I'm not actually thinking about E minor and then thinking about A7. I'm, I'm already on D major, even while the chords are moving. And as you can hear, it lands beautifully. Another thing that I have found to be really significant and, a, and should be a point of focus when you are uh, learning jazz improv is to target the altered chord 5 because you'll hear jazz artists do things like and that's just the sharp 9 to the flat nine to the five of the major chord one so What you can do is whenever you have a chord five in a series of two fives in whatever tune you're practicing with what you want to do is make it an altered chord five especially for the major chords can work for the minor chords as well make it an altered chord five so you do sharp nine flat nine and then five of major chord one and in my left hand, I'm playing these altered uh, chord five chords as well. I do have a PDF for left hand voicings that you can check in the description if you want more info on that. Otherwise, the altered chord would be seven, three, and um, flat 13. So targeting a point of resolution by creating an altered uh, resolution is something that's really, really common in jazz. There is an awesome free PDF that is available for you to download. I have created a sheet with all of the phrases 
and ideas that we talked about today. I've written them out in C major for you to get started. Of course, if you want them all in all 12 keys, if you want the full digipack with the write up and everything, um, you can get that also in the description below. And by the way, I also recently created a members only section that you can join here on my YouTube where I will actually be taking this video and expound on everything. Actually, the main focus of the video that I'm going to post uh, right now following up this video on my members only is to help you practice these phrases. So I've used a backing track and we're going to take some of the lines over all 12 keys. I'll play a key and then you respond with the next key up a fourth and then I'll play the next key and then you respond. So I've sort of set up that video in that way so that you can actually practice it with me in real time. You can put your headphones on or your amp or your Bluetooth speaker and play along with me. We'll be taking some of those exercises in all 12 keys. So if you want to really get into detail with the concepts that we talked about in this video, the phrases that we talked about that will help you with jazz improvisation, you can go ahead and join my members only where from now on, I'm pretty much going to be putting detailed videos that explicate um, in greater depth what I talk about here on the main channel. But of course, everything that I put here on the main channel is sufficient enough for you if you really are willing to put in the work. And of course, I have the free PDF for you that you can use to get yourself started. By the way, the members only video is also going to be attached when you get the full digipack of all the 12 keys. So you'll have that video with all the play alongs of, of us sort of going back and forth and learning the licks together. Just so you know, all of that is attached in my description below. Um, and shout out to my two members so far on my Piano Gold membership, Hyacinth and Will. The last thing that I think is also really important is then learning common jazz licks. We all have favorite artists that we like. I loved McCoy Tyner. I mean, I checked so much of his stuff back in the day, but it's also really nice to check out common licks, you know, like those licks that are even hard to pinpoint who was the first person in jazz history to play. Like this. It's such a common lick. Oh. This is like, you know, minor, minor nine and you go down the um, root position extension so like you do you can do do this over all minor keys this is a really common lick that i i heard you know in jazz records and people play it to this day. It's probably the most common mind lick I <laughs> have heard in jazz and it's good to know. So I'll take another common lick, maybe not so common, but also good to know. So when you go down the minor, to close off this video, these are some of the things that helped me to get better with jazz improv. I remember um, my jazz piano lecture said, said to me, you know, you don't actually have to end the phrase when the phrase ends, meaning you don't have to do your phrase doesn't have to end there. You can continue the phrase. And that idea of playing more than one phrase over one chord helps with that. Because if I do... I'm not stopping my phrase. I'm not doing... Just because I'm landing on the D major, you know, I'm continuing my phrase and I'm using these phrases that are over D major to create more melodies, you know. <laughs> 